Hey friends, I hope your week is off to a great start. Today I'm going to be attempting Chris Morocco's recipe for lemony glazed sour cream yonets. Since I saw Chris experimenting with this recipe on his Instagram a few months back, I'd been keeping a close eye on the BA website for the recipe to be published. Well, that day is finally here and I am so excited to try this recipe out because sour cream donuts are one of my favorite treats. I do these Bon Appetit recipe tests every single Wednesday, so if you like this one, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Without any further ado, let's see how this goes. As always, I'll leave a link to the recipe and ingredient quantities in the description box below. So if you've been on the channel for a while, you know that I really like to start my recipes by prepping all of the ingredients. So first, I'm just weighing out all of my dry ingredients and then giving them a quick whisk just to get everything evenly combined. Next, I'm moving on to the wet ingredients. So interestingly, this sour cream donut doesn't actually contain sour cream. Instead, they're using whole milk plain Greek yogurt. I'm using the Faye brand of Greek yogurt, which is my favorite brand. It's a little bit more tangy and a little bit less sour than some other Greek yogurts. So that's what I'm using, but feel free to use whatever brand is your preference. Once you've got everything all measured out, you just want to give this a really thorough whisking to get everything evenly incorporated and make sure there are no white streaks left in the mixture. Once evenly incorporated, you can add the dry ingredients into the wet and then you can just fold this to combine. And at first it's going to seem like there's a lot of dry ingredients and it might give you a bit of a struggle getting it all incorporated, but you'll see that after about a minute it turns into this really sticky shaggy dough so I just went in with my hands to incorporate and make sure that there were no dry pockets. You're definitely not trying to knead this and really develop the gluten like you would with the bread dough. However, it is really important to make sure there are no white streaks and unincorporated bits of flour. Once it's all evenly incorporated, you can turn this out onto parchment paper or wax paper like I'm using, sprinkle it with a little bit of flour, then you want to roll this out to a half inch thick. So I've got my bench scraper which has a ruler on the side of it. So I just kept rolling and checking the thickness to ensure that I was getting it to a nice even half inch layer. Once you've achieved an even thickness, you want to brush away any excess flour. Then you can use circle cutters, a drinking glass, any kind of circular shape you have to cut out the donuts. I happen to have a three and a half inch round cookie cutter and a one inch circle cutter to make the donut holes. I also experimented using a chopstick to poke a hole in the middle of the donut. Either technique works really well. For the end result, I actually preferred the chopstick method over the punched hole method. However, if you want to have donut holes, you need to do the punched hole method. You can regather your dough scraps, form it into a ball, and re-roll it as many times as you need to. I hate wasting food, so I did this two times, and I was pretty satisfied that I had absolutely zero scraps and zero waste when I was done. So while I was preparing the dough, I also had some oil on the stove coming up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. The donuts are going to cook for about two minutes on each side, so you're going to flip them at the halfway point. The visual cue you're looking for is a nice deep golden brown color. Really looking back, I could have gone slightly darker on my donuts, but overall I was still really satisfied with the taste. The donut holes do cook up a little bit faster, so these were closer to about 90 seconds per side. The donut holes were also kind of challenging to flip over because they wanted to kind of bob around and just hang out more so than flipping. You're going to want to let the donuts and the donut holes cool for at least 10 minutes on a wire rack before moving on to the glazing step. So the glaze comes together really quickly. It's just a matter of combining all of the ingredients and giving it a whisk to get everything incorporated. The recipe called for a quarter cup of water in this glaze, which I found resulted in a really runny texture. So my glaze didn't kind of coat the donut in a glossy kind of crispy cream way. So the next time I make this, I'm gonna scale that water back just a little bit. And what I'm gonna look for is having the glaze coat the back of my spoon. So you can see how runny my glaze is here, and it's not really sticking to the surface of the donut, it's soaking in a little bit more. Even though my glaze soaked into the donut and didn't sit on the surface giving me the pretty finish I was looking for, I still had that really great fresh lemony flavor, so still a win overall with the donut. 
Okay, so the donut glaze has been drying for about five minutes and it seems kind of dry to the touch, so I think this is the perfect time to dig in. So this is kind of the visual of the punched hole versus the chopstick method. I think I really actually do prefer the chopstick method. I like the kind of irregular hole shape and that the hole's a little bit smaller. But overall, both of them look really nice. So let's go ahead and break this open. Looks really soft. The inside looks a little bit pillowy, kind of bubbly and airy. So this should be pretty tender. It's nice and crispy on the outside. The inside is really light and fluffy and cakey. So it's exactly what I was expecting. The lemon glaze is really thin, very subtle. It's not an overpowering lemon flavor. So I think this is really great. And then of course I got the donut holes as well. So they're cute, kind of irregular. Look puffy inside. Perfectly cooked, nice and pillowy. So these are really good. I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.